on here. So in this video, I'm going to show you basically a major version of that minor arpeggio progression we did a couple of days ago. So if you haven't checked that one out, do that as well. You can do that after this one. Both are standalone videos, but both are very important to know. So you know what chords are included in a minor key and now for a major key. And the difference here as well, it's going to be a different arpeggio pattern. And we're also going to go from this end of the guitar neck up to here. So here's the actual thing. <laughs> We'll start here with the one major chord. And this shape, that's, we're going to play that on steps one of the scale and then on step four and five. So once you learn this shape, you basically know almost half of the shapes that you need to learn. Uh, and as always, you have the tabs available on my Patreon. You have a link to that in the description as well. So we have this first arpeggio. So this is the E major root note here. And the actual pattern I'm using to play this is a 16th note pattern that goes like this. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So it's basically us doing the whole arpeggio but then adding two more notes. So we get eight notes in total. And I pick this up, pull off, up, down, 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 up, pull off. So I do that once in each uh, position here. So I go E major, so one major chord. We have F sharp minor, or two minor. And it goes like this, nine, five, seven, six. And we do another minor chord, a whole step up. So we just move up here. So we get a G sharp minor. That takes us up to the four major, which takes us up to the five major, which is B. Now we go back again to the minor shape. So you see here by learning two shapes, you got pretty much the whole thing covered. Uh, so this one is going to be a C sharp minor and that would be the six minor chord. And then finally we got the D sharp diminished, which is the only new thing here. But shape wise it's going to be the same as uh, the, the major one, but we, we move up one fret here on the B string and then we get that diminished shape. And then we're back to major, and for major here, when we get back to the one chord, let's extend it arpeggio like that. And so this slide here is, is hard, it's part of the sound, so you, you don't necessarily want to get rid of it. Uh, so just makes it a bit, you know, slippery and slidey this arpeggio, but I like the sound. So. And the way that I'm doing it is just uh, going down the regular shape and then shifting down one, two, three frets down to the third and then go down 14, 14, 16, 12. And that ends up being uh, perfect for 16th notes. So you got one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. So that's the whole thing. I'm gonna play it once more slowly and also call out the the roman numerals again and if you're thinking what what do you mean roman numerals check out the previous video where i explain the whole thing about roman numerals and why we use that for chord progressions so we don't uh, mistake them for just the intervals of a scale so we got the one major chord two minor three minor four major five major six minor seven diminished and one major so this progression then or the order of the course will remain the same right so that's the important thing to know so once you know this you know it for any major scale and that's why it's good to think in numbers so even though we have e major we have f sharp minor g sharp minor a major b major c sharp minor and d sharp diminished doesn't really matter 
in terms of the absolute pitches, what matters is that you understand the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven uh, chords in a row, and that's where the Roman numerals come in. But like I said, you have a full explanation for that in the previous video. So now it's just about sitting down and practicing this. And uh, of course, as we did with the, the previous one, yeah, you can turn this one around as well. So you can start at the top and go down. Right, so same kind of idea. And, it, you know, it sounds very pleasant because it's such a logical progression, even though it can sound a bit exercisey as well because we're basically just moving up and down the, the scale. But I think it's a nice way to, to work on arpeggios and get a specific pattern down as well, meaning the, the specific sweep pattern I use here, because the right hand is doing exactly the same thing the whole time. So it's a, it's a nice way to break out of just sitting with, you know, one thing and moving it chromatically or however you, you currently practice. And also you get some fretboard knowledge and theory knowledge in at the same time as you improve your overall technique. So if you have any questions, let me know in the comments. Otherwise, good luck with this one and see you in the next lesson. I used to have real issues with fast alternate picking when it came to two notes per string. I was fine with three notes per string, but the two notes per string thing was a bit harder to, to crack. So if you struggle with fast alternate picking as well, and you don't know what to practice or for how long, I've created the perfect solution for you in the form of the pentatonic picking power book. So in this book, you'll find a daily workout that will not only help your pentatonic picking, but we'll also upgrade your overall alternate picking technique. So it contains basically the same exercises I used myself to develop my picking abilities, as well as numerous students over the years that I've given the same exercise to with great results. So I know these exercises work as long as you put in the work. So it's not a quick solution or quick fix. It will still take a lot of work, but at least you have a very easy to follow routine. So if you're up for a big alternate picking upgrade in 2024, I cannot think of a better start. It's nine bucks and I think it's very underpriced, but I did it that way just so as many people as possible could be helped by this. So check that out.